Uh, please welcome to the show Todd Hollinsworth. Todd. <laughs> Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you for having me. Hey, man. Uh, thanks for doing the show. Uh, uh, it's funny. In the fall now, football dominates everything. It seems like between college and, well, it's true, between college and pros. There's a football game on every night, sometimes right. two. Uh -huh. and, and and this baseball yeah. playoff, especially the, the, the league championship series, both of them have been amazing, and they still get overshadowed. And I hate that because I'm a baseball guy, so I appreciate right. a guy coming on talking some, some baseball. <laughs> uh, you know how football is. Football, uh, you know, it's drama. It's once a week. I mean, the matchups are there, but uh, every game is, is incredible. It's, it's a once a week experience. Uh, you know, to mm -hmm. watch baseball, you've got to watch the narrative. You've got to watch the whole story. And sometimes the whole story takes uh, a year to tell. Sometimes it takes a five game series. Yeah, you need something that you need something that people born uh, after uh, 1980 don't have an attention span. <laughs> right, right, right. That's a good point. <laughs> the, you're, it's a generation of people who vine. You know what vine is, Todd? <laughs> it's a six second film you make on. That's right. People tell me, oh, you got to see my latest Vine. It's great. Oh, yeah, you're regular Scorsese. <laughs> you did a six-second Goodfellas. You jerk off. <laughs> Todd, I'm sorry. I've, I've been hitting the pipe. Uh, no. Uh, so, Todd, why don't the Tigers educate me? Why don't the Tigers score 10 runs a game? I mean, that lineup, like, uh, I know Cabrera might be hurt a little bit, but he's still amazing. Like, uh, do you feel it's Boston pitching, or are they just not hitting? Well, it's a combination of things. Uh, I mean, it certainly is a part of Boston pitching. Uh, I mean, they've been pretty good this year. I mean, <laughs> their regular season record certainly doesn't uh, uh, doesn't lie, and certainly what they did in the American League Beast is uh, evidence enough. But uh, in this series in particular, Prince Fielder, I think, is the guy that really does get singled out here. And For me, uh, Miguel Cabrera, he's battling some injuries. Victor Martinez is swinging the bat better. But it is kind of their way. They're a streaky team. They score runs in bunches because of the power and, 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 uh, and how they're built. It's kind of interesting you compare the two teams. Boston is so much better. I think back to that final game against the Tampa Bay Rays in which the Tampa Bay Rays took the one nothing lead. I think it was about the sixth inning. The Boston Red Sox scored two runs in the top of the seventh inning, and they didn't even hit a ball hard. It was a broken bat, a slow roller to short, right. three no beat out. It was Jacoby Ellsbury dumping a, a little duck fart in center field that fell in for a base hit, going <laughs> first to third, and, right. and scoring on a wild pitch. The Tigers really don't do that. You saw it in the first inning of this game tonight. Uh, Miguel Cabrera runs through a stop sign at third base trying to come home on a – he's got no business. It's station to station with these guys. He gets blown up at the plate by a, a mile and a half. I mean, there's just no chance. I mean, they're just not very athletic when it's the majority of this team. Yeah, it's uh, but still, though, it's a fun series. I right. like offense, but it seems – it does seem amazing. I, I don't know. I just uh, – uh, I do hate that it's overshadowed. By by football, uh, Cabrera's have been uh, it proves that you know if he's hurt a certain way, he can become a singles hitter. He's not good. Is Cabrera one of the best hitters you've ever seen? Well, he is the best hitter that I've ever played with. I mean, right. he's part of it. I, I mean, I, you know, it, 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 it's, uh, I, I lost my job to him. I basically became a fourth outfielder. That. that was the moment. I, that's who I was replaced by. It was the day in 2003. I got called in the general manager's office, and they said, wow. "Hey, listen, Holly, we brought you in. <laughs> we like what you're doing." But we're calling this kid up because we're not winning, and we think he's going to spark us a little bit. We'd love to keep you around, but if uh, you know you want to go play somewhere else, you know we'll, we'll try to accommodate that. And I said, listen, I signed to play here. I'll stay, but this kid better bring it, whoever he is. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. uh, Daryl, be honest with us. Uh, not many people listen to the show. We're all friends here. The, the first thing that came to your head was it was it racial? <laughs> Say that again now, <laughs> Todd. Yes. The first thing that came to your head when you found that out, what, did you have any racist thoughts? Oh, no, not at all. I just knew that uh, I couldn't hit the home runs I was supposed to hit in Florida. I was brought into slug, and I was hitting <laughs> balls off walls. And they're like, this kid is going to hit the ball to the moon. He's, he's a great talent, and uh, he, he, he's backed it up since the day since the day I've seen him. He's For, fun to watch, I, I think any, any Florida Marlins dating back to, to, to our 03 championship team will tell you the biggest difference on that team was Miguel Cabrera. I mean, he's the kid that he, he got called up and he sparked us all. He he made he, he kind of made us hang our heads. For us how easy it looks. Twenty year old, yeah, yeah. Right. For for a layman like me, what what makes him so special? I mean, I I know he's got. I look at his stats. He's got all the he numbers. Won the triple crown. What makes him different? I mean, I can tell you from a football perspective why you know a certain right. guy is good at what he does. I don't know why Miguel Cabrera is so great at hitting a baseball. Okay, well, I, I can do. I, I can give you a pretty good idea here. He has some of the best hands uh, when it comes to hitting. Talking about swinging the bat, taking your hands to pitches, the ability mm -hmm. to cover the strike zone in a big man's body. 
I, I really don't know how else to say it other than that. I'm sure you all have seen some big mashers come along, guys who are big in stature, 250 pounds, 260 pounds, have really good leverage. Mm-hmm. Um, he is a big man, and he's got incredibly quick hands, the fastest hands I've ever seen. It's like the, the, the ultimate combination if you're going to build a hitter. Now, I'm not talking about necessarily a player or an athlete. I mean, obviously, you know the homers in the RBI. He's not fast. He's not uh, fleet of foot. He, you know, his range isn't very good. But when you talk about hitting, he is the best. He's the greatest combination. He, you know, wow. For me, I was always battling, uh, you know, fighting my swing at times, getting out on my front foot mechanically. He doesn't break down very often. I mean, he covers more ground um, at the, in, in the box than, than, than 90% of major league hitters can cover, and he puts the barrel on the ball more than most, and that's really what it comes down to. Right. And he's wow. also got the one factor that I used to always talk about with Piazza when I was coming up with the Dodgers. You know, I hit a ball off the label. Like, I get jammed, and that's like maybe you're hoping your bat breaks and the ball, you know, kind of dunks in over the second baseman's head, and you can go down there to first base and feel good about yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, Piazza used to hit balls in the same spot, and he'd get them up in the blue seat at Dodger Stadium. <laughs> right. That's what Cabrera does. He does the same thing. His room for error, even on the baseball bat, is greater than the rest of us. Uh, he gets jammed, and his jam shot's hanging off a wall. My jam shot, you know, falling over the second baseman's head. Wow. Uh, yeah, no, honestly, and the great thing about baseball too, Cabrera is the, the best hitter ever, and he's got a beer gut. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. it's, it's awesome that baseball. <laughs> he does. He looks like a softball player. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, he looks no. like a beer league softball guy. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah, right. And that's so great about baseball. Like, it's mm. still you know the the days of Babe Ruth are still here. As a matter of fact, when I see a baseball player in shape, I get mad. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the Boston Red Sox almost got away with it a couple of years ago with chicken and beer. Unfortunately, it didn't turn out so well. Right. I know. You got to. You got to watch when you eat it. Yeah. You got to watch when you eat it. But uh, yeah, well, listen, uh, uh, these guys are proof that you can have a beer guy. You stuff enough biogenesis and you'll be fine. Hey, uh, listen, you know, our, our game is all about results, as, as every professional sport, I, I'm sure, certainly is. I mean, I speak to baseball. It's uh, it's my livelihood. I talk about it every day on MLB Network. But, it, I mean, that, the truth of the matter is, if you can put the results out there, our sport allows you to look any way you want. I mean, you hear it all the time. People don't complain about weight in our business until you stink. And then when you start mm. to stink, you're too heavy. But as long as you're hitting, you can go do whatever you want. Hey, uh, what about A-Rod? Uh, have you ever met uh, or seen just a bigger A-hole? I mean... Oh, well, I played with him. I played with him shortly in Texas. Uh, we were together for about a couple months. So you know. You know. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I really... Uh, I mean, are you? I, I don't have much nice, many nice things to say. There, there's, Is that true? Uh, you know what? Wrong. All kidding aside, a lot of people who meet him say, <laughs> yeah, David Wells told us an astonishing story. As, as a major leaguer, you'll, you'll probably relate to this, and, and it'll make you cringe. It made me cringe, because I love David Wells. David Wells, not an unknown sure. player, uh, pitched a, a perfect game, got a World right. Series ring. Uh, when A-Rod goes to the Yankees, um, a friend of his puts him in an awful position and says, could you get A-Rod to sign something? So David Wells bites the bullet, because he's a great friend, and during batting practice, goes up to A-Rod and swallows his pride as a major leaguer and says, listen, I have a friend who's an enormous fan. Do you mind signing this? And A Rod said no. Yeah, a Rod said right. no. <laughs> Have you ever heard of something like that, Tom? Well, I, you know, here's the thing. Um, you know, there's there's people who walk around in society that are, you know, I mean, yeah, I'm sure you guys bump into these people all the time. You sit in in in, in a baseball player, and let me tell you something. Uh, his circumstances, being very wealthy circumstances, being uh, a lot of success early in his earlier in his career circumstances. I mean, he's kind of, he believes what people tell him. And I mean, here's the thing. I'm the greatest ever. I mean, if you start to buy into it and you start to believe it, you start to, you know, you start to promote yourself that way. And I think that's how he comes off to most people. I mean, the narcissistic is thrown out there an awful lot. Uh, I mean, mean, go where you want with this. I mean, he has basically, through this whole arbitration process, even about his 211-game suspension, basically attacked the players' union, uh, attacked Major League Baseball. We've got potential litigation from, from A-Rod going back at baseball. Well, there, it, it's there. He's fighting this suspension all along. I mean, the same Yankee team and same Yankee teammates that were doing their best to work with him under these circumstances at the end of this 2013 season, which they had no control over. I mean, he's walking back into the clubhouse because, you know, the rules say that, that, that he can come back in there. They, you know, they were grinning and bearing it. Say what you will. And this guy's now turning his back on just about everybody. I mean, he get in his way, he's going to try and take you down. I mean, it's that simple. And I, I, mm-hmm. I just I don't know how he, he moves past this. But at this stage, I mean, what has he got to lose? You know, you got to look at it like this. Nothing. It's yeah. Basically, everybody in the world's against him. I guess is what he's probably thinking. 
I just don't want him to see him pass Hank Aaron, who is honestly the classiest guy in the world, like right. of all time, Hank Aaron, you know, the direct opposite. Who even when was asked about A-Rod said, I just want him to get his life together. He actually is worried about him. That's what Hank Aaron said. Uh, right. You know, I don't know. I don't want to see him pass anybody. I mean, yeah, right, exactly. I, I, I've seen it that way all along. I mean, it, 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 I don't want to see him breaking anybody else's records who I grew up watching or who I had respect for, who I know did it the right way, because everything about him uh, is, is typically pretty negative. I mean, you know, you hear the, the guys in the clubhouse say, listen, he's not a bad guy, but they're about the only ones. I mean, most everybody else in the world really has issue with how he does his business and, uh, you just heard too many good things to say. No, mm -hmm. and I think they're lying too. I mean, I mean, they got, the guy's clearly uh, right. He, uh, he, maybe, he, maybe they are, but again, they got to grin and bear it. I guess that's my point. I mean, you know how that clubhouse is. You just got you, you got to work together. Right. You got to go out there and play every day, and you got to find a way to do it and grin and bear it. Well, that that, that applies to television too, and I'm trying to tell right. John Ritchie that every day. <laughs> hey, uh, can you stay through the uh, the break, Todd? What's that now? Can you stay through a commercial break for us? Absolutely. You thanks, thanks, man. I appreciate it. Great sport, funny guy, good guy, a baseball expert. And uh, all right, John, we'll talk about the SEC in a second. <laughs> this is baseball time. It's October chill. Back into it. The Artie Lang Show, weeknights on Audience, only on DirecTV.